So if yours are, I did the wiring. Well done, she's all wired and done. I'm going to modify so this LED sticks right here. I'm going to, instead of soldering it on its legs on the board, I'm going to run some wires to it and push it right out and hot glue it from the back. Because I really want this thing to be sealed. So, these didn't really tighten up that good, but... A few minor adjustments, and this thing is pretty much dust and moisture proof. So, which is what I want. To be dust proof. I'm giving a quick test. I've, this is all done off camera. And she works. First go. Now I said to use these um, bits of wire here, it came with a roll of wire. Use these to jump off these. To make standoffs on that. All the switches, those, to the circuit board. That didn't work. It just left too much um, potential for shorts. and It's just a bloody nightmare to put it together. I couldn't even line all the holes up. It's just a pain in the ass. I had to substitute just use long bits of wire. That's much safer and better. So less chance of shorts and anything failing. failing. I'll open it up and do a little mod for this LED so it's all sealed and give it a good test on camera. I'm quite happy with it. Works quite well. There you go, it's all nice and done. I did decide to upgrade the LED though. Because this one didn't have um, long enough leads on it. And I didn't have any, um, it had extra long uh, well, I'm on a different colour, so I've got this one of those clear green ones. Put it in there, and they had long enough leads. Look at that, just enough. That's what you want. Perfect. Stands out through there. Beautiful. Now, um, when doing these nuts up, especially on these connectors, don't use pliers because it just doesn't. It just doesn't work. You've got to get yourself one of these. Does the job real nicely. And there's little uh, jumpers I give you. You're supposed to use this bit of uh, block component lead wire. It gives you a roll of that and you're supposed to use them and bundle them up and poke them straight through and solder them on through the board. Poke them through and solder each one of them on. Well that just didn't work here. I could not get that to work and there was too, the possibility of shorting was too high so eh, wires is actual proper wiring like this is a good way to go. A lot safer and a lot easier. So I did that. That looks pretty good. Standing the components up does hold out for good airflow, so that's worked out quite well. I did do a, um, as I said, I did do a lot of tests off this off camera when I finished it, and it works pretty good. Nice case, too. Sonar ABS plastic. And that just fits in there. They were nice and tight. Bit of warpage, but that's because the uh, zip ties on the bloody inductors aren't uh, they allow to fit this um, case properly. I could put washers under there and put longer bolts in, but yeah, actually I might just do that. Get some longer bolts for in here and just put washers in. That way um, the levers are built. This uh, top cover on the board a bit. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. You could just bolt us out. Yeah. Put some washers on and make some spaces. But we'll see how we go. Let's put it back together and give it a test. Let's give it a test. I'll take this last batch up and I'll set the meter up in there. It's really good high speed desulfate, this one. Right there. Now, I've got about 60 or 70 odd volts off this thing. So it does say high voltage rules, but it bites as well. So, and can sting. Here's little caps you can put on there, but I might change those screws. They're not very good screws, those. Um, battery. Battery negative. And battery positive. Yep. Ooh, 62 volts DC. There you go, it's zapping the living daylights out of it. If it has over 12 volts, this thing can run its own on a battery. 24 volt, 6 and 12 volt battery on and charger on. And we've got a charger connected, so turned off altogether. There we are. I might have 
permanently installed inside of my car now. Like I originally intended to. I'll stick that one in the ute and that can stay in there. No, this one here can take over doing a whole lot instead of that one there. Because that one here is really only meant for one battery. So it's a smaller unit. This one's a bigger, physically a bigger unit. It actually delivers physically bigger pulses, so this should be uh, much more effective at getting uh, four batteries at once. This is designed to do one battery at once, so either way, it's handy to have an extra desulfator. Yeah, he's making a high pitch with desulfating pulse of wine too, so it's working. Anyway, that works quite well. Should make a, an, an, a sad battery happy again, so hopefully that battery won't be unhappy for too long. Funny thing is, it says here it's complex. It takes three plus hours, estimated. It's how long it takes to build the kit. Although it took me half an hour. So, that's not bad. So it's for 6, 12, and 24 volt batteries. Well, that little infinitum one is only for 12 volt only. So, not suitable for SLA batteries that they have a Joe electrolyte. I think the ones I've got, those Porter lacks of um, flooded electrolyte. I just put water in them. Might have put a bit too much, so so it. Yeah, anyway. Kit requires a suitable battery charge. If the battery is too flat, to operate the zapper on its own. Optional multimeter to monitor zapping pulses. Or well, maybe a small DC panel meter would go on there. And it'd be on all the time I can monitor it that, like, uh, that way. Anyway, I'll uh, get that all hooked up. To, um, that will take over the other DC off and hopefully this thing will uh, kick ass and I can put the other one uh, in my car. Anyway, thanks for watching.